Hi, I'm Karen, and this is The Learning Circuit, where we learn about basic electronics. Today, we're going to learn about the science of electricity. Wait, can we make lightning come out of my hands? We can. Cool. The science of electricity. We use electricity every day. In our homes, devices plugged into the wall are powered by AC electricity. Handheld devices, like our smartphones, are powered by DC electricity. We know that electricity for our devices comes from outlets in our walls and from batteries. But how does that work? How does electricity get from here to here? To understand how electricity works, let's start with the most basic parts. Everything, all matter, is made up of atoms. Atoms are made of particles, protons and neutrons in the core, which are surrounded by electrons. Electrons, that sounds familiar. Electronics, electricity. Hmm, I bet that means electrons are important. In an atom, protons are positively charged, while electrons are equally negatively charged. Atoms normally contain the same number of protons and electrons. These atoms are electrically neutral, having no charge. However, this can be changed. An atom can gain or lose an electron by passing it to or from another atom. This causes the atom to become an ion, meaning that it has extra or is missing electrons. If an ion has extra electrons, it is negatively charged because the electrons give it more negative charge. An ion with missing electrons is positively charged. Charged ions exert force on each other. We can look at the law of electrostatics, or Coulomb's law of electrostatic forces, to understand how these charges interact. Coulomb's law states that, unlike charges attract each other, whereas like charges repel each other. Let's use magnets to see this in action. Magnets have polarity, meaning the ends, or poles of the magnets, have opposing forces. The opposing forces of the north and south poles of magnets interact the same way as the opposing forces of positive and negative ions. According to Coulomb's law, opposing forces attract. The north end of the magnet attracts the south end of the magnet, just like a positively charged ion attracts a negatively charged ion. Coulomb's law also states that like forces repel each other. The same is true for the interaction between positively charged ions, as the magnet's north end repels another magnet's north end. Coulomb's law of electrostatic forces says that the force of attraction or repulsion exerted between two charged bodies is directly proportional to the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This means that two charged objects will repel or attract more or less proportionately to the amount of charge they have. More charge means a stronger force, while less charge is a weaker force. Again, we can use magnets as a visual to help us understand this relationship. Here I have a bottle of baby oil, and I poured in some iron oxide powder, which is a finer version of iron filament. The iron is attracted to the magnet. If I hold the magnet against the side of the bottle, you can see the size of the magnetic field. The pull of the magnet is only strong enough to pull iron in at a close distance within this field. We can also see how the strength of the charge factors in by comparing the strength of different types of magnets to the amount of charge in an atom. These neodymium, or rare earth magnets, are stronger than these ceramic magnets. The rare earth magnets are only a quarter of the size of the ceramic magnets, but are more than twice as strong. They have more charge. The ceramic magnets don't attract until they are about a half inch away. The neodymium magnets can attract each other at almost an inch and a half away. Less charge means weaker force. More charge means stronger force. Unlike with magnets, in electrical circuits, the distances are quite small. So small that you can't even see them. They're atomic, meaning at the scale of an atom. We talked about how atoms become ions when electrons pass from one atom to another. This passing of electrons is called electric current. Because of the way electrons are structured in an atom, electrons flow from one atom to another better in some substances than in others. Substances in which electrons flow easily are called conductors, while substances in which electrons do not flow easily are called insulators. The amount of work needed for an electron to travel from one point to another is called potential energy or electric potential. 
This difference in electric potential between two points is called voltage. It's also referred to as voltage drop, voltage difference, electromotive force, or EMF. I mentioned that magnets have polarity with their north and south poles. Well, batteries also have polarity. The electric potential between its positive pole and its negative pole, meaning how much and how long the electrons will continue to flow, is the voltage of the battery. Our circuit needs to have opposing charges to cause electrons to flow. I need to introduce something that has polarity. Now would be a good time to point out that a magnet won't work for this. While magnets have polarity, it's of a magnetic field, not an electric field. We can use magnets to visualize how electrical polarity works, but it doesn't actually cause electrons to flow, therefore it doesn't generate an electric current. However, our battery has electrical polarity. We can introduce a battery to our circuit because it has a positively charged end and a negatively charged end. If we put components like an LED between them, the positive and negative poles of the battery will cause electrons to flow through the LED. The energy from the electrons flowing is what causes this LED to light up. That energy is the potential energy between the positive and negative ends of the battery and is measured in voltage. Batteries are also limited in that they eventually die. Voltage is dependent on a difference in charge between the poles. As the battery gets used, the electrons flow, making the negative pole less negative and the positive pole less positive. Once the poles get close enough to being neutral, the electron flow decreases to where there isn't enough energy to do anything useful. The difference between the poles, the voltage, gets very low, making the battery effectively dead. Sad battery. Today we learned the science behind how electricity works. Are there any other electrical concepts you struggle with? We'll see what we can do to help. Post those comments on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!